Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand how to make an inverter in different styles, right from static to dynamic to zero and MOS and so on and so forth. Okay, let's get started. Now, we need to make an inverter for that. We start with representing the inverter in static CMOS style. As we have seen in the previous clips, if we know the static style, rest of the styles will follow a static style for its pull down network where pull up might keep on changing. So for static style, let's write an expression for inverter. Suppose my output is Y, I would say, and my input is A, I would say Y equal to A bar. And the truth table, input, output, if my input is zero, my output is one. If my input is one, my output is zero. A simple way of making a schematic of an inverter in CMOS style is to identify an output. So here the output is zero. Now, if you remember, I have taught you four basic rules. Remember this again as a quick recap. An NMOS will always be connected in the pull down and will be responsible for producing a zero at the output. A PMOS will always be connected as a pull up and will be responsible for producing a one at the output. An NMOS will always turn on when a logic one is applied at its input. Whereas a PMOS will always turn on when a logic zero is applied at its input. So here you see that the output is zero. Who produces the output zero? We just saw that NMOS. So let's make an NMOS and we know that NMOS is a pull down network. So let's connect it to ground and NMOS circuit is ready. Now the input is going to be one for NMOS. So that's also taken into consideration. Who produces a one at the output? That is a PMOS. So let's make a PMOS real quick. So PMOS is ready and NMOS is ready. We know that in static CMOS style, we need to connect the pull up and the pull down together. And in between, we need to take the output. The pull up will be connected to VDD. We just saw that PMOS is responsible for producing a one at the output. And because an in inverter, we have only one input. That means both these inputs needs to be one or needs to be shorted and we called one input which is nothing but A. So this is A, this is my V out or output Y. Now let's quickly see whether it works well or not. Yes, when A is zero, that is input is zero, my PMOS transistor turns on, my NMOS transistor would be off and my output will be pulled to VDD. When my A is one, so A is zero, output pulled to VDD, condition satisfied. When A is one, that means my PMOS transistor is off, my NMOS transistor is on, and output is pulled to ground or logic value zero. So when input is one, output is zero. So this is nothing but my static CMOS circuit. Very, very straightforward. I taught you how to make it from the truth table also. Let's go ahead and make the same inverter in NMOS style. So we know that in NMOS style also, the pull down remains the same. Here I'm drawing a CMOS inverter for your reference. This is my PMOS. So the pull down remains the same and pull up will be replaced by an NMOS transistor. So here, if I'm using an enhancement type, this is an enhancement type MOSFET. This is my input, this is my output, and this is my ground. If I'm using my enhancement type MOSFET, the biasing would be such that my VDD would be connected at its gate also and at its drain also. This is nothing but drain, gate, source, drain, gate, source. So this part is exactly replicated here. We have just substituted here in place of PMOS and NMOS, which its gate connected to VDD. So when its gate of an NMOS is connected to VDD, we know that this NMOS is always going to be on. Fine. Now let's see whether the working is happening or not. Input, output. If input is one, that means this transistor is on. Let's call this transistor M1 and this transistor is M2. At the same time, input is one, M1 on. M2 is also on, why? Because its gate is connected to VDD and that is on. So what's going to happen is this M2 transistor is trying to pull the output towards VDD while M1 transistor is trying to pull the output towards ground. Here, 
there is a fight between the two transistors in order to pull the output to their respective potential. Whoever is stronger here, it's a very simple thing. If it's a piece of cake and there are two cats who want to take this cake, you know that the cat which is stronger will defeat the weaker cat and take the piece of cake. Similarly, here if I make my M1 transistor strong compared to M2, it will win and will produce an output nearly equal to zero. So I got the inverter functionality. When my input is zero, this is anyways off and this is anyways on. So the output will be pulled to VDD. So this is nothing but representing an inverter in NMOS style. Let's quickly go ahead and see the third style. 